Hello and good morning friends, welcome to the CCA Reset Live Lecture. Dear friends, with our ongoing series on gender studies, today we would be talking on gender and media. This is the 12th lecture in series and we hope that uh, you would be liking today's lecture too. So, uh, we would like to carry this uh, lecture forward and we would like to introduce uh, Dr. Archana Prasad, who is Assistant Professor in Department of uh, Sociology, Kamala Nehru College, University of Delhi. Uh, Dr. Archana Prasad is uh, continuously giving her best uh, immense knowledge she is giving through the series and we believe that uh, this series is uh, helpful to you all the lectures pertaining to the series are there for you on the youtube so uh, we would like to welcome dr Ashna prasad once again hello ma'am welcome to the adset lecture thank you gitika welcome to the lecture series on gender studies today is the 12th lecture on gender and media uh, it is very important to understand the role of media because media plays a dominant part in our life besides the traditional uh, media of television, newspaper. Today, social life is almost captured by media in the form of Facebook, Twitter and we share all a part of our private life as well as public life on media. So it is very uh, important to understand how media can lead to a kind of a construction of a new kind of an understanding of gender in today's society. So with this, the objective of the lecture is to understand how patterns of image and representation impact patterns of inequality, dominance and discrimination explore how media constructs images of femininity and masculinity. So, it's not only constructing a particular type of an understanding of femininity, but it is also on trying to create a certain kind of masculine identity to uh, which is taken as or as a model and which a large percentage of young youth would want to adopt to that particular image of femininity or masculinity which is portrayed on the media because it is accepted as by and large as the correct model. The third objective is to examine the contradiction in the image of gender. So, what is important is to try to understand that there is no one particular way of trying to put um, media. There are many a times that gender is manipulated by the media according to the market uh, phenomena. So, it is a kind of a marketization of media where gender, if it is a part of a a gender empowerment uh, program, it would articulate a gen sense of a gender equality, but then if it is a part of trying to focus on certain traditions, certain cultural practice, then certain gender stereotypes would become integral to the uh, whole media of, uh, representations. So, you need to understand where are these contradictions and where and at what kind modes are the gender relations being manipulated by media and where is the reality of gender relation lost in such manipulations. The fourth examine, uh, objective is examine not only women but also men can suffer. So, we I have been stressing from this uh, uh, lecture number one that when we talk about gender we are not only talking about women so it is very important to understand that gender representations in media are not only impacting women and girls but it is equally impacting the kind of behavior taken on by the men and boys and that is how we try to understand the whole notion of sexism and sexuality in media because the entire phenomena of marketization, sexuality and body are also seen as commodity around which a lot of profit can be accumulated. The next objective is explore the debate around accountability because uh, it is also an uh, age where we talk about freedom of speech and freedom of expression. So, at this time, how do we take into account where, what are the media actually accounting for? How do you see what the media is saying is taken as truth? So, it, it is very important to understand the question of accountability. And therefore, the word, last objective would be to see if there are any modes by which we can suggest means in which gender can become a very important institution for articulation of gender equality for it could become, it has been used by large number of government campaigns to 
understand the whole notion of uh, uh, gender empowerment large number of campaigns related to gender has been articulated through the media so when we try to understand what is media we see it could range from a range from the traditional modes to the present social media so it could include newspaper magazines comics strips novel cds music videos so there is a entire wide range which of uh, modes through which media can be understood these representation can influence the general public perception of the different genders so you try to uh, create a kind of a public opinion about what is feminine what is masculine and what is could be a third gender advertisements and pictures in magazine carry significant messages about cultural norms and values so these are the medium through which norms are articulated or brought down to the mass media representation mostly concerns gender and representation of gender have tended to perpetuate gender stereotypes so we we whether we talk about uh, the feminine uh, feature of a women or we talk about beauty we talk about the kind of a zero figure to the whole kind of macho image of ma man the large number of stereotypes which has been produced by media it is also important to understand that the, it is not a static kind of a relation so gender relations or gender images are changing from time to time and this is reflected in the media so from the time when there was no right to education for women to today women being in the forefront we see media playing a very dual role where it also advances the cause of women so the change in gender relations uh, due to the feminist movement or due to the contribution uh, contribution of feminists are reflected in the forms of uh, tele serials advertisements and different kinds of representation of gender relations in media their increasing presence not of only of female body but also of eroticized male body as i have already said it earlier that the entire notion of body is very significant because where we don't look into body as a kind of an agency belonging to an individual but we commoditize it we look at it in the form of a kind of a commodity which is in the market to fetch a certain kind of profit and in that sense it is does not make a difference whether it is a female body or it is a male body there the criteria would be to see the maximization of profit and that is to a certain extent we can say that there is a kind of a capitalization of media where profit is becomes more significant than the agency of individuals so why do we need to study gender and media because media is a powerful medium for representing socially accepted way of life what is presented in the pub, uh, in the media is articulated to a large population so what is it is assumed to be the correct path or the correct way of life to so for a large part of uh, children and youth it's a kind of a socialization process where more than they learn from the peer or they learn from the family what they see in the media makes a major impact on their learning process and therefore we see there are large number of uh, educational programs on the media to cater to the young child so it has a strong impact on individuals mind so we need to understand how these representations are going to impact individual and the collective media influences individual and people spend more time on media now because the access to media the uh, to the different forms of media has exploded and through the internet through the mobile through smartphones people are hooked to social media 24 hours so the, every part of their life is now a point of publicity what they are doing in their private life is becomes accessible to everybody it is a kind of creating a platform where people share what is the correct way of life so if there is one particular person who sa says a certain kind of phenomena on the social media it becomes acceptable and soon it is taken or practiced by a larger majority of people gender in this process is produced and reproduced through uh, the media as we were already constantly focusing on the accept the gender is not fixed gender is not constant it is constantly constantly in the mode of reshaping itself and in that uh, process media plays a dominant role 
media shows life from others point of view so that, that's more significant you don't reflect there's no kind of a self reflection it is trying to understand what other people are doing what everybody else is doing so you try to incorporate that into your own life and that becomes a important mode in which gender relations gets articulated or becomes accepted by a large majority of the people so we see a different kind a kind of a romanticized of a fascinated world created by media so these fascinated world is created through romantic or love stories tips for marital life successful life so th- these are some of the areas where media focuses on creating a romanticized uh, a kind of uh, illusionary world for the youth a large amount of uh, television serials would focus on how the gender role of women or in terms of domesticity is to be emphasized so you have programs which would be showing on how to become good cooks or it would be showing how you could become a good housewife and then you could be termed as a good house manager so all these are strategies through which a certain kind of gender stereotypes get circulated in the society then there is over emphasis on the strength on the kind of a beauty and in when it comes to beauty we see that there is a kind of a dichotomy between uh, the male and the female which is strictly maintained in large number of time and most commonly could be uh, advertisements which would say that this is only for men and this is only for female and when this discrimination is made between male and female product the hierarchy or the sub- dominant and subordinate uh, position between man and women and is uh, represented in the sense that if you are a man you cannot use a product which is meant uh, for in the market for female that would question your masculinity if you are using a product manufactured for the female body so media has a dual status to reinforce unequal status as well as to circulate new ideas and lead to change in gender relations so when we try to understand the way in which gender is related to the whole construct of media we cannot just limit it to common sensical understanding of media but we need to understand what are the feminist contribution in trying to theorize the interrelation between gender and media and in this we see that they try to critique as well as recreate media so you media you cannot completely throw away media because it's an important institutions through which uh, a large number of ideas can be spread to the mass so you have to use it as a pl- platform for creating a kind of gender sensitivity among the people so it also investigates how female audience consume various me- media so women are not only impacted by representation of certain kind of gender relation in the media but most important is that the women are the biggest consumers of uh, media and that is why the way in which media programs are planned out is good in terms of large number of uh, uh, slots which is uh, are, uh, planned out for programs for showing domesticity household work are on the times which is assumed to belong to the women and programs which are considered to be more masculine which are considered to be more public oriented which are considered to be more serious oriented are then slotted in the uh, time which is assu- again assumed to be a male uh, space then there is a stress on women taking active roles so you uh, media is not only affecting in terms of representation in terms of consumption but also in terms of participation so the role of women as participant in the process of uh, the production of these uh, media content is very significant so they are interested in question of representation of gender they analyze structure of power that influence the devaluation of women so power structure not only in the production of certain programs or at the t- at the time of consumption as well as how the entire s- structure of people involved in the uh, media production in itself is gendered because the, there is a large percentage of men participation compared to women the see media is central to discrimination against women 
So, we have a large uh, number of uh, feminists who have talked about the gender and relation among them the most uh, important is Betty Friedan. In her work Feminist Mystiques, he argues that femininity has been associated with the concept of maternity and housekeeping. And to a large extent today, even we see this trend being followed. Betty Friedan also underlines the overlap of media representation with social relations between sexes. So, most of the media content are allowing sexual relation between men and women. The next uh, feminist is Naomi Wolf. Naomi Wolf, in her book The Beauty Myths argues that the images of ultra thin supermodels and perfect bodies glamorized by advertising, fashion and the media in general are indication of a patriarchal attack on bo women's body. And this is a part of a major debate in feminism where we see that it is the entire notion of beauty, the entire notion of body is a, a, a kind of a based on a stereotype where, where, uh, whereby too much of emphasis is put on the kind of uh, figure that a model or a actor, actress would uh, acquire on the color, color of the skin, on the age of the modeler, model and that is why after a certain particular age, they are not considered to be a part of the industry. So, it is a kind of only those who are in the fertile, beautiful age who become a part of the articulation of certain kind of image. Then we have Laura Mulvey who gave the term male gauge. Now, male gauge is a uh, concept which is used in the feminist writing to emphasize how the man as a spectator or as a consumer gives too much of emphasis on the body of the women. So, the, uh, the, the quality of the product is not in terms of what it is articulating the message that it is saying, but in terms of the beauty or the figure of the uh, actress that they are using. And that uh, again creates a certain kind of a kind of a myth that it is only the, those women who are white skinned, those who are thin or those who are young can be considered as contributing to the media sector. Then we have the other feminist Gay Tuchman referred to as symbolic annihilation. So, we have we are Ambedkar giving the work annihilation of caste, we, are, we have symbolic annihilation that implies complete uh, uh, denial of the space of the media for women to be able to utilize that space for improving gender relations. So, the, 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 it is it's a kind of a struggle for women journalists, for women working in the media sector to, be, to become a part of it and articulate a program or articulate a message which could be more feminist or which could be articulating more gender neutral uh, norms and uh, ideas. So, we see the representation of gender takes place in two, uh, two forms. One is the portrayal and imaginary of gender. That is, we question how women are represented in media and the meaning attached to these images. So, each image has a symbolic meaning which is utilized for in the uh, context of creating a certain kind of gender relation. Representation of men and women in media, here the question is on the disparity between men and women in the role they play. So, for example, if we look into the kind of a representation of gender in media in terms of the participation or towards the gender lens, we see 78 percent of contributors to Wikipedia are men and the 80 percent of the biography given in Wikipedia are of men. So, it is implying itself that it is it is dominant by men and it, 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 it could be a kind of a way in which it makes the uh, women contributors and women achievers as invisible. The three themes describes how media represents gender. Women are underrepresented, which falsely implies that men are cultural standards and women are unimportant or invisible. So, it taken for granted that uh, if it has to be achieved, someone who has achieved great height, it had to be a uh, men. Men and women are portrayed in stereotypical ways that reflect and sustain socially endorsed views of gender. Depiction of relation between men and women emphasize traditional roles and normalize violence against women. 
representation of women across all media tend to highlight the following first beauty with very near, narrow understanding of what is beauty size and physique sexuality emotional so a lot of emphasis is on the uh, sensitivity or women being emotional women uh, uh, as it is as uh, it's a large no- understanding or it is an articulation by large number of uh, movies which says men don't cry uh, these, so these are certain kind of stereotypes which are articulated through dialogues through certain media tag and it gets accepted as norm norm so and then the most important thing that is depicted again is the kind of a relationship and most of the relation uh, depicted in the media are in terms of a conjugal relation or in terms of a romantic relation between man and women and there is no other relation that could exist between the two important to understand representation of masculinity and more men are shown as aggressive dominant they are shown as macho man they are shown as being capable of uh, or they are protecting women so all the qualities of physical strength phys- on be- becomes an accepted part of uh, male body and this is represented through a large number of television programs as as well as movies so there has been a shift in the image of media so first there was a shift in terms of a kind of a 70s 80s we see a kind of a macho man kind of an image where james bond uh, image was articulated in the 1990 we see metrosexual uh, image being created by the media where young men with high disposable income living in the city and they would uh, be objectified by the female counterpart by 2000 the image changed to violent image of masculinity and we see a large amount of violence becoming integral part of understanding ma- so you had to be aggressive you had to be violent to be, be portrayed as masculine similarly there has been a shift in the image of uh, women first there's an image uh, there are two kind of uh, image which is shown in the media there's a women who could be very good who, or the the other which are shown as bad so you have nothing in between the two these polar opposites are just juxtaposed against each other to dramatize difference in consequence that befall good and bad women good women are pretty differential and focused on home family caring uh, very cultural very particular about traditional values and the bad women are if we took it in the context of india it would be those who are more modernized who are more westernized and they fall into uh, taking into recourse of violence or doing something which is against the gender norms gender stereotypes a large number of gender stereotypes are portrayed as we have already said uh, that there is a whole idea of the masculinity being portrayed as violent as aggressive female body being shown as fair beautiful uh, zero figure kind of a thing so we have different stereotypes of man we have the action hero portrayed as strong aggressive and violent then we have the big shot represent the epitome of success so shown as having all desirable qualities economically well off has all the uh, qualities in him which would be a kind of an ideal type of uh, masculinity which becomes then accepted as a way of life and a large population would work towards acquiring these attributes so we have large number of uh, advertisements which we are shown would produce gender stereotypes so we have gushi this ad attempts to demonstrate a women's place in the world and that is at men's feet right below his just don't stand up too far so the, it is articulating the relation of power between man and women these are only two of them but there are n number of articles which are strengthening the stereotypes but there are also uh, commercials and advertisements which are shifting and we have advertisements which are now showing more equitable gender relation of they are showing the uh, change in the way in which gender relations have been articulated so what is the negative consequence of this articulation is that bodies and sexuality becomes commodity and the consequence of these are mental and physical illness so a large number of women would starve to become acquire the physical thinness would uh, and dieting becoming uh, using gym to acquire that idealized model of the body becomes a kind of a stress for a large number of women and they don't realize that it could be a question of their own biology or their own metabolism which is re- responsible for the size of the body 
women's self objectivity in terms of body surveillance and so you become very self conscious kind of a what is a kind of your beauty is it fitting or matching the beauty that has been articulated through the media and lot of uh, focus is put on uh, the look as a result there is an entire industry of com- cosmetics which is blooming and they are using like na- large number of co- Uh, chemicals which could be unhealthy in the long run unrealistic expectation of men of women so the kind of relation which is portrayed on the media is assumed as an ideal kind of a relation and people tend to copy or tend to uh, imitate the kind of relation into their everyday life which becomes a little problematic then it leads to psychological disorder psychological disorder body dimorphic anorexia bulimia large number of problems which are health related problems which are result of media's version of gender increase in the likelihood and acceptance of sexual violence so sexual become violence becomes a part of everyday life but in spite of the negative uh, consequences they have a positive shift Today men and women are portrayed as working side by side in such as hospitals schools and police stations in cinema roles of women have developed away from the victim so earlier women were always portrayed as the victim so this today there is a shift we see the ad on nirma which is a washing powder there is a shift from what kind of uh, gender relation it used to portray back in the 70s to what it is now showing in terms of women being part of manual physical activity and not only limited to domesticity a large number of advertisements are breaking gender stereotype we have whisper which says touch the pickle which is a kind of a menstruation where women were not supposed to touch pickle but it is breaking such gender stereotypes we have pantene which says label against women we have tanish advertisements so there is n number of advertisements which are portraying the changing gender relations in the society so it is very important to try to understand that uh, it is a kind of uh, as a consumer it ha- one has to balance out the negativity and positive uh, positivity in the media representation and consider media as an important weapon for gender sensitization and gender empowerment thank second part of the uh, lecture on gender and media uh, in the second part we'll talk about uh, gender accountability and the good practices in in media which could be l- l- making it more sensitive towards gender relations when we see the uh, 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 content of this lecture we see we'll be talking about censorship because uh, this is, is a, in a kind of a debate between how much of freedom of speech and expression should be given on whether the content of the media should be regulated and subject to censure accountability is defined as the progress by which media should be expected or obliged to report a truthful and complete account of the news 
So, the, many a time we are very aware of the fact that in day to day practices, the true picture of the incidence or of any account is not actually portrayed. It could be against the ethic of the uh, media company, it could be against the political uh, party or it could be n number of reason why the, uh, the true picture is not articulated to the public. So, this is a question of accountability. So, it has actually got the potential to be a, a act as a mobilizer. It can mobilize people and we have seen n number of incidents in the recent uh, days where mo media is able to mobilize a large mass on any particular cause. So, it is uh, important to understand that media has to function in a very subjective manner. Uh, different from the political and ideological stand of a particular group of a particular organization and work in a more collective manner. Censorship implies regulation and control which works to protect gender relation but it infringes on freedom of speech and freedom of expression. So, censorship is in terms of trying to show the kind of relation which is being portrayed or kind of nudity which is being portrayed it has to be cur curtailed. But then there is this counter argument which is that it should be a question of um, freedom of speech and freedom of expression. Media can play a very positive role as a watchdog holding government accountable and ensuring effective functioning of the democracy and that is where the, uh, the question of accountability becomes very significant that is media able to function in a neutral environment where it could hold the government and it could hold the functionary accountable for their action or are they pressurized un under the government and the bureaucracy to work in a particular direction. So, we look into good practices in media accountability. Number one is transparency. It, it, uh, it should be more transparent. It should be voluntary, it should be based on dialogue and debate and that is why a large number of media programs are now uh, initiating a, a strategy towards including members from different community, from different parts into a dialogue. External government control and threats are positive but should be balanced. So, it, the media should not become a kind of a rubber stamp in the hand of the government and uh, portray only what the government wants to articulate. Publish full, fair and reliable information, engage in fair criticism of government, ensure participation of citizen in social life, abstain from harmful propaganda, stress on expression of diverse and relevant opinion. So, when we try to understand the relation between the uh, me media and government, it is important to understand the relation between media and politics. So, democratic society, the good government should not be involved in controlling the media, which is not the reality. In, in the Indian context, we see that media, uh, e each media uh, company has a kind of a political influence of, uh, on them and they work within the ideology of the political party. Corporates and political interests have invested heavily in the media. So, it takes back, back to the whole idea of capitalization or the fact of how it is the profit which is more significant and not ideology and not the whole idea of accountability. In Tamil Nadu, every large party in the state now has an affiliated station often owned or co-owned by the party leader. So, the, the, it is only an example of the linkage of the nexus between media and politics and this nexus would then prevent the articulation of the true image to the public. Government are obliged to ensure the existence of democracy that ensures media pluralism. So, the media pluralism becomes important because if ver different uh, version from different uh, angle are becomes a part of dialogue and debate, then the reality becomes more clear. Freedom of political debate is a fundamental right in our country, but many a time it is again politicized and becomes a question of political uh, by competition among different political parties. Political parties and individuals have a right to access to government media during election campaign. 
when we try to understand gender media and election we see that uh, media has not been very positive in terms of articulation and it has ha accepted a kind of a gender stereotype in articulating a certain kind of image of women during election men and women tend to have vast different experience of uh, uh, participation in political process men and women are visible and dominant in both media and election and gender stereotypes prevail in both these differences are mutually reinforcing in the sense that less visibility of women in the media impacts the political success less women political me politicians means less news stories focusing on women leaders and what is also uh, notice is that the news stories around women uh, politician would be more to look into the kind of uh, family life to look into the kind of conjugal relations or to go back into the entire domesticity to understand uh, the uh, political leader whereas if it is a question of a male political pol pol politician it goes into try kind of looking into the profession occupation and the achievements in life so the whole gender dichotomy between domestic and public is accepted in in articulation of the relation between media and politics women participation in politics as voters candidates politicians civil society and activists and in other role is important because it allows women to exercise the fundamental civil and political rights so you have to use the platform of politics to articulate your rights it is also important because it allows countries to draw on full range of human resources available to it to progress and helps to ensure that women and girls needs are adequately met in pol policy making process Gender stereotypes and discriminations are damaging to both men and women because they constrain individual and society as a whole. Gender discrimination is also compounded by gender news media. According to the Global Media Monitoring Project in 2010, men were 79 percent of news subject, and in news continues to portray a world in which men outnumber women in almost all occupational category. the highest disparity being in profession which obvious implication of the visibility of women in politics the media sector has improved in some ways however with a growing number of female reporters in all issue areas including hard topics such as security politics and economics so this is also important in time, terms of how there was a gender divide between the participation of women where women journalists would not be allowed to air, uh, enter areas like politics security which was considered as hard so because of a, a kind of a gender sensitization now they are feminist uh, women journalists who are the uh, entering these area and there is no divide between hard areas and soft areas on the gender line it is on the individual capacity to report a certain event irrespective of whether one is a man or a, a woman women reporters were 6% more likely than male to have women as subject in their stories so again if it, uh, it uh, again a certain kind of bias is there that if you are uh, uh, reporting or you're trying to interview it uh, kind of uh, women are given again areas which would be considered to be more comfortable to be more related to women's stories The media's multiple contribution to election can also be applied to addressing gender discrimination and promoting equal participation. For example, media as a watchdog. Media can include questions of dis discrimination in its accountability remit. Is the media addressing access for female voters are political parties practicing gender stereotyping and discrimination so these are some of the relevant questions that the media can raise in order to make uh, the uh, program or representation more gender balanced media as civic educator so we have the two roles dominant role of media one of media as a watchdog where it uh, keeps the functioning of the society in a more uh, regulated manner and the second is media as civic educator where media can educate people about the rights and the wrongs where it is a, uh, has the access to the mass for articulation of certain ideas which would be considered as uh, more true or could be considered as uh, uh, 
ideas which are then accepted by the majority as normal. So, it could be used as a means for breaking stereotypes and to a large extent it has be achieving certain success in this area. Media as campaign platform. In the interaction with political parties, media can encourage parties to put forward female spokespeople and use a range of images of men and women. So, this will be detailed in the uh, lecture on women and politics where we see how political relations have been gendered and to a large extent again the dichotomy between the private and public has been accepted in the ways of functioning of political parties. So, you need to question the ways that it, uh, women were only assigned uh, uh, for example, women would only be given the ministry of family and child welfare or would be given areas which were considered to be more domestic. So, these are being questioned and there has been change in these areas. The fourth is me media as public voice, analyst and interpreter. Media can encourage dialogue and includes a diversity of voice and provide analysis that uses women as experts and include a gender lens on range of topic. Now, this is that has already become a part of the media because of the in, uh, participation of different companies or large number of even a competition within the media. It has started taking the gender angle or it has become more conscious towards gender relations. So, what is again important in terms of understanding gender accountability is to understand media and violence and it is the most important time where gender relations or gender stereotypes gets articulated across media. Women are over represented as victims of violence often filmed in close ups and depicted in sensualized form of news coverage. So, the whole idea is not to try to understand the problem of uh, violence or to go into understanding what structures led to the violence. The focus then shifts to body of the women where the victim's body becomes the focus of attention and this diverts the debate from the more serious concern about the structures that is leading to violence and conflict. Female victims are portrayed as helpless, weak and blamed for the victimization. So, there is no agency of the women which could actually work out for coming out of the violence situation. Men are portrayed as monsters or having pathological obsession. So, it is again certain kind of gendered stereotype which comes out with the depiction of violence in uh, by media. Female imaginary becomes a metaphor for political ideology rather than protection of women. So, you catch on a certain kind of an ideology and make it as a part of your political uh, campaign rather than bringing about a change in the gender uh, relation or change in the structures that led to the violence. For example, in the wake of 9-11 image of women in burqa or hijab where women, Muslim women cover the their face, it was taken up by the US as an ideological uh, uh, correct path for attacking certain um, countries on the pretext of protecting women. But it was not actually a question of protecting women, it was a question of power and control of one uh, dominant power over the other countries. So, when we look into censorship, censorship at present refers to the examination of book, periodical, plays, films, television, radio program, news report and other communication media for the purpose of altering or suppressing content regarded to be objectionable or offensive. In terms of gender, it could be in, in terms of the body language, it, uh, it could be in terms of the uh, norms of uh, exposure of the body, in terms of the content, in terms of what it is articulating in, uh, uh, in terms of the gender relations. So, it, it, there is a certain kind of control or there is a certain kind of restriction on what is actually represented. So, it has evolved through three stages. The main threat Orig organized religion. So, the initial uh, stage of censorship was where the church had control over the media and it restricted certain articulation of certain kind of information, ideas which was considered to be against the ideology of church. In the second stage, we see the uh, 
political apparatus or the state became the controller and uh, it started controlling the articulation of images in the form of uh, again content which could be against the political ideology. And third we see is in terms of the freedom of expression where you have the right to freedom of expression, where you have the right to speech, but then again there is a certain limit or there is a certain line which has to be drawn in order to control the right of expression and speech. So, there are different forms of censorship. We have pre publishing censorship, which is preventive examination of the content before making it public. We have post publishing censorship, repressive, which is examines the content after making it public. Uh, there are other forms, which is passive censorship within the conditions of institutionalized censorship, avoiding deliberately topics, names, etc., that are politically sensitive and can hinder publishing. Self censorship within the condition of freedom of the press, purposely avoiding sensitive topics according to respective direction from politicians or authorities. Corporate censorship, business intersects prevail over public interest. Also, political censorship, religious censorship, postal censorship, there are different forms of censorship which are in practice. Then we also have news censorship. The news censorship has many practitioners and increasingly refined practices. In Hungary, the government's media authority has the power to collect detailed information about journalists as well as advertising and editorial content through use of fine taxes and licensing to press crit critical media and steer state advertising to friendly outlet. In Pakistan, the state regulatory authority suspends the license of Geo TV, the most popular channel in the country, after a defamation claim against it was made by intelligence service following a shooting of one of the station's best known journalists. So, these are different forms in which news are censured. In Turkey, a recent amendment to the internet law gave the telecommunication directorate the authority to close any website or content to protect national security <coughs> and public order as well as to prevent a crime. More recently, the government blocked Twitter and other social media allegedly in response to a corruption scandal that implicated Erdogan and the other senior official. In Russia in 2014, multiple media outlets were blocked, shuttered or, show, uh, or saw the editorial line change overnight in response to government pressure. While launching its own media operation, the government approved legislation limiting foreign investment in Russian media. So, we have different kinds of uh, censorship and where politics or the government pressures becomes very significant in kind of the news which is articulated. Then gender-based censorship includes regulation concerning advertisements for female product, laws about women should uh, and most of the censorship would be in terms of a cultural norm which has been articulated which are again gender stereotype in terms of the ways in which women should uh, dress, in the way in which women should interact in the public, the way it uh, there is a lot of debates around pornography uh, and th these are under control. It is embedded in range of social mechanism that mutes women's voices, deny validity to the experience and exclude them from political discourse. This is a, there is a kind of a feminist understanding that there is a, a gender censorship is not used in the positive manner. It could lead to a kind of uh, uh, making women invisible in the media by just trying to control or regulate their participation in the public sp space. And it is a time where religion could be used as a means to control and regulate the what kind of images are portrayed in the media. So, it, it, it could serve as a means of controlling women's mobility and expression in terms of controlling women's sexuality, in terms of controlling women's entire uh, body language or uh, 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 simply stated it could be in uh, uh, an attempt to bring about a structure of patriarchy in the society. Its purpose is to obscure the real conditions of women's life. So, uh, too much of emphasis has been paid to see that the true picture of women's lives are not represented and the iniquity of patriarchal gender relations and prevent women. Large number of women writers who had been writing about have been subject to certain kind of gender ba based uh, censorship. The few examples are uh, Charlotte Brown's Jane Eyre was considered to be a dangerously subversive text at the time of publication, so dangerous in fact that it was banned from girls school well into the late 19th century. 
In 1994, an arrest warrant was issued against writer and poet Taslima Nasreen by the government of Bangladesh. Her book Lajja, uh, was, uh, where she wrote about a Hindu family being persecuted by Muslim, had inflamed Muslim fanatics and therefore it was uh, put under censorship. Elena Pochigira, a writer and organizer of indigenous women in Amazon rainforest, was subject to threat of violence because of her advocacy of rights of laborers. So we see there is a certain ways in which women's writership, in which her women's ideas have been curbed under the prote uh, pretext of censorship. So there is a certain kind of a crisis in the media in India. And media has failed to be as accountable as it should be. And the reason why it has failed to be in count accountable are it is relies on official sources to provide news stories with authoritative backup. Journalists prefer to quote high-ranking politicians rather than civil society. So this could be a, a kind of a, a putting across the ideology of the political party to which the politician or the official belongs. And therefore, it can not, ne not necessarily be the truth. Second, selection of prime time stories centered around violence, conflict, deviance, high status actor and negativity. And these are all in an attempt again to increase the profitability of the company. News values and communication formats are designed to produce news that sell. So it should not be producing items which we are not uh, saleable in the market. And the structures of society are such that if it lacks the male gauge, it, if it, it, it does not have that kind of sensitization around women's body, it is not going to sell in the market. So this, it's a kind of a vicious circle. There's a certain kind of uh, assumption which per, uh, per is around in the market, which, uh, which uh, leads to a construction of a kind of story, which again goes back to creating of the same kind of stereotype from which it emerged. News fails to provide viewer the choice or hold government accountability. This, uh, the, the freedom of expression and speech of the media itself is under debate. So we try to see whether gender can be a kind of where the media can be used as a me, me, medium or as a means by which gender equality can be expressed in the society. So the first is freedom of speech, giving equal voice and air time to women and men. So there is a kind of a removal of a dichotomy between the participation of women in the as reproducer of image or the reproducer of the content of media where you need not necessarily be dominated by the men. So you need to represent both men and women in multiple roles and also try to capture the vast array of gender relation in society and not just restrict around areas like violence, conflict, romantic, conjugal relation, more uh, subjective matters, more uh, areas which are beyond these dichotomatization or beyond this uh, traditional understanding of gender relation has to be a part of the media uh, programs. The second is through good governance. As much as the media has duty to serve as a watchdog on society, the media itself must lead by example and practice good governance in its operation. The third, respecting women and men's right. The media editorial content through images, language, portrayal and absence of a diversity of voice and views and its workplace should not perpetuate stigma, discrimination or sexist attitude against women and men. So we have to try to understand where there is a kind of a creation of a space 
uh, whether it be within the studio or it be it outside it, it is a kind of a creation of acceptance of an ideology where there is the stress on respecting human rights, there is stress on respecting gender relations. So it has to come out of the uh, idea of looking at women as commodity or it has to come out of the whole idea of media as a profit making company. So the, uh, the, therefore, it is uh, it's a debate between the social aspect and the economic aspect of media. So when we look into gender or we try to understand gender equality in terms of it, it has to be kept in mind that media has to concentrate more on the social aspect rather than on the economic aspect. But how possible it is in a neoliberal economy where everything ha uh, has got market value of they are giving more space to social ethics, idea, uh, uh, accountability to function is of importance. Women's need as listeners and viewers. Few analysis of programming for radio and TV are gender disaggregated. They fail to take account of women's time constraint as a result of their multiple roles and of their preference with regard to content. As research elsewhere has shown, gender sensitivity in programming could yield significant gains. So you have to balance it out now, not only in terms of women as uh, uh, making content of the media, women as consumer of the media, but also in terms of the kind of uh, programs that you are trying to put across. You need not necessarily have uh, uh, the kind of uh, dichotomization between a good woman and a bad woman, a cultural woman and a modern woman, but try to articulate more broader context in when gender relations can be conceptualized. So women as consumers, now it is again statistics which shows that women are a larger consumer of media program than men and therefore it becomes equally accountable for women to be consuming only part which is considered to be acceptable, which is considered to be more gendered rather than consuming everything and anything that comes to them. So it is very important to try to understand that media has a dual role in society. One is that it is sending across certain <coughs> kind of information, it is sending across certain knowledge, it is helping us to build uh, the kind of information that we have. But it has to have a line where it has to be drawn because if it sends across negative information, it is going to be detrimental for the society and especially when it comes to kind of creating a image of man and women. So we need to question this image, imaging and try to conceptualize a mode in which media is used as a medium for enhancing gender, human rights, for using media, for changing stereotypes, for using media to set a, give more space and more freedom to women and their counterparts. Thank you. Uh, with this note, thank you ma'am, thank you so very much and dear friends, if you have any queries or if you want to give your feedback for this particular lecture, then you can mail us at info.cc at the rate nic.in. All the lectures pertaining to the series Gender Studies are there for you on the YouTube. So you can uh, go through the lectures the number of times you want it and afterwards definitely you can uh, write to us. We would be meeting again very soon, till then take care, goodbye. Thank you ma'am, thank you so very much.